The new release of Pico Card has finally arrived, and here's what changes. The project is now split in Pico Card, the cheapest option requiring only a Raspberry Pi Pico, and Pico Card Plus, the more powerful alternative which also uses a microSD expansion board. In addition to the Raspberry Pi Pico, the project also supports another RP2040 base board, the RP2040 Zero by Waveshare. The main difference being that it's smaller and it has a neat RGB LED. Even more devices will be supported in the future. Pico MemCard does not require safe ejection anymore. Simply install the latest release, drag and drop a memory card image named memcard.mcr, plug it into your PlayStation and you're good to go. The LED will indicate the status of your device. If the LED is blinking, green on Pico or red on the RP2040 Zero, there are some problems with your memory card image. When the LED is on or green, all recent save has been fully synced and you can safely turn off your PlayStation. When the LED is off or yellow, the latest update to your memory card has not been fully saved. Wait for the LED to turn green before turning off your PlayStation, otherwise you risk closing your most recently saved data. Pico MemCard will automatically sync new changes after 5 seconds, but if you want, you can manually enforce this process by pressing Start, Select and Triangle at the same time. Pico MemCard Plus adds support for multiple memory card images. As before, install the latest release, then upload to your microSD card as many memory card images as you want. You must name each image with a different number followed by the .mcr extension, for example 0.mcr, 1.mcr and so on. When plugged into your PlayStation, Pico MemCard will initially load the lowest number image, in this case 0.mcr. You can switch between memory cards by pressing Start, Select Up to go to the next one and Start, Select Down to go to the previous one. You can also create a new empty memory card and switch to it by pressing Start, Select and Triangle. For Pico Mem card to be able to detect controller inputs, it must be plugged in the same slot as the controller, meaning right above it. If the controller is plugged into port 1 and Pico Mem card is on port 2, it will work fine, but you will not be able to detect any inputs and therefore you will not be able to switch between memory cards. How do you build all of this? As I said in my previous video, there are a bunch of different ways you can build one. You can use a controller plug, a broken memory card. This guy even built one using a Cat5 Ethernet cable and a 3D printer. Everything is well documented in the GitHub repository. I've also designed a custom PCB that makes the building process a lot easier. There are two main versions, the full-size ones for both Pico and RP2040 Zero, supporting the optional microSD expansion board, and the mini one only for the RP2040 Zero, which has the same footprint as the original memory card circuit and can be swapped out for it. Links for them are in the GitHub repo. Many people already built one, and I plan to eventually make the design publicly available. Together with the PCB, I've also released this minimal 3D printed case. It's a single piece design that uses clips to tightly hold the PCB in place. If you want to support the project, check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching.